they should be considered. Um, SoftJorn uh, works with a lot of the blockchain, and they, we're going to go through um, and have a really spirited discussion. Um, the slides will be available afterwards, and if you have questions, uh, please ask them now um, so that we can uh, benefit from even more uh, name. Yeah, expertise. And with that, I would like to introduce you to the gentleman right here. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Okay, great. So before we start, I have a very quick uh, thing. I just need to pick someone I can rely on. Uh, any volunteers in the front row? Someone just raise your hand. No, 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 no super easy task for you. Just, just anyone? No? <laughs> don't worry, don't hesitate. Just, just raise your hand. It's a very super easy task for you. Come on. Okay, I know Natalie could do that, she's my colleague. <laughs> but uh, anyone else? Well, maybe you can do it. It's very super easy. I'm from Brazil, I don't know. It's, it's super easy, sense. super easy. All, all I want to do is just, just begin us, so there will be a question on the slides. And if you appear, you can just read it, okay? You can just raise your hand and say, do we wait waiting in it, and then read the question, okay? Just that. that. That simple. Okay? Good. So, uh, let's get it started. And uh, I'm really excited to be here today. And uh, thank you everyone that you can, you for coming in today. And I uh, hope you will find this session uh, valuable. So, um, uh, a few words about myself. I'm uh, Lumimer and I work as a project manager at SoftJorn. And it's already been 11 years since I started. So, um, SoftJorn is, is a technology service company and we work closely with uh, companies in ticketing and finance industries. And a few years ago, we uh, started to get questions from our clients about <coughs> blockchain. Like, shall we be using it? How we can use it? What are the best uses of it? And so on. Since then, we have developed blockchain ecosystems and work with clients to define uh, the <coughs> the best use case for their industries. And today I would like to share uh, our ideas how ticketing and blockchain worlds intersect. So uh, before we start into that, I would like to talk about what is blockchain. If it works or not, maybe my mouse will work. Maybe it works. So, what is blockchain? And uh, if I had to describe it in just a few words, I would say uh, that it is distributed immutable database. Or in other words, we can say it is decentralized, unforgeable ledger. So, quite a few smart words, right? Well, let me explain that. So, distributed means that there is no central control unit that approves or declines the transaction but the decision is made uh, via consensus of the network computer, each having a copy of this database. So the data in blockchain is stored in the blocks, and the blocks are linked and secured using cryptography. Each block typically contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, the timestamp, and the transaction data. So the data in blockchain is like set in stone, so they can't really change. So once any block is added to the chain after being approved, it can be altered. So if you want to modify something, you will have to add a new block on top of the previous one. So that way we can think about blockchain as a growing ledger that adds pages from time to time. So, and transparent means that everyone can see what is inside the block and verify that all data are valid, nothing is fake. So that is good for the fraud prevention, but what if you want to utilize the uh, blockchain benefits such as uh, data immutability and transparency and uh, distributed computing, but don't want to open the data to the public? Let's say uh, we can think about medical record that could be shared between the medical institutions, but not with the public. And uh, another example could be a customer's credit history that is shared between the banks, but again, not with the public. So uh, for this, uh, we have a solution as well. So uh, 
there is a blockchain of like, implementation that is private, so uh, the it has a access control layer built into the protocol, so that network uh, participants can control who can join the network and who can participate in the uh, consensus process. So it is also faster and more efficient in terms of the processing power as only defined nodes are involved in the consensus uh, pro uh, process. So, uh, okay, so we have talked what is blockchain, right? Now, I think it worth to mention what blockchain is not. So, first, the blockchain is not Bitcoin. <laughs> it is indeed a popular misconception that blockchain is the synonymous to Bitcoin. So when we say Bitcoin, we mean blockchain and vice versa, but indeed, so the truth is that blockchain does provide the technology for the Bitcoin transaction, but its uses are far broader than those of digital currencies. Second, that blockchain is not a product. Rather, it is a tool that we can use to build a exciting array of business solutions, right? So, and blockchain is not a distributed database replacement. And blockchain complements distributed technology with these unique features as um, data immutability and transparency. But that said, distributed database is uh, better and sometimes more, better and more mature solution uh, if the business network is not involved. We can talk about that later. So, uh, oh, right. One, oh, anyway. <coughs> Oops. A bit too early. Anyway. So, uh, now we know that blockchain is a good platform for the Bitcoin. And in, in fact, it turned out to be... Uh, to be valuable for other fields as well, especially when blockchain version 2 came into play. So with blockchain version 2, uh, there, there, there is a significant uh, improvement in the transaction handling as, we, as it offers a smart contract. So smart contract... Oops. No way. Okay, so smart contracts are programmable uh, complex scenarios. So uh, they are really the contracts from our life, but the one written in the programming language and uh, that are executed as soon as certain triggers are pulled. So they can uh, basically implement whatever business rules we want. And the simplest smart contract could say, like, initiate good shipment when a uh, payment is received or if we talk about ticketing, we can say proceed with all tickets refund if you find this cancelled. Or well, let's say we can uh, restrict the comp tickets uh, resale to the specific clients only. We can limit the resale price to no more than 50% of the original price. Well, the possibilities are endless. So the smart contract is a killing feature of the blockchain implementation called Ethereum. So Ethereum, uh, we can treat it as a global, uh, it's a public blockchain, and it runs contract, and it's a global virtual machine where you can easily deploy and run your applications in the form of smart contracts. So uh, that, because of that, Ethereum has become a very popular environment for the new applications, with TDD not being an exception. So we can talk about a blockchain for a whole new session, but let's focus on the blockchain in ticketing use cases. And the first one that I wanted to mention is really the, a complete Ethereum-based ticketing systems with own cryptocurrency. So it is the deepest and therefore the most resource and budget intensive integration. And um, the, in this case, system usually offers their own currency that is used on the different <laughs> stages from the event publishing, from the ticket sale, exchange, and resale, etc. So, these currency tokens are usually sold during the ICO 
which stands for the initial coin offering. And that is a good way to raise some additional funds without sharing ownership of the company, unlike traditional IPO. And the hope is that with time there will be a demand on the tokens that will rise the currency value. So here you can see some examples of the startups that recently <coughs> emerged and basically used this approach. And just an example, we can look at the cut tickets workflow that was taken from the white paper. I'm not advocating them at all, just something that I came across. So uh, the thing is that it all starts with the uh, customer that need to download mobile application to set up their identity. And when the customer buys in file, the smart contract will transfer system tokens to the user account, and the smart tickets is linked to the user wallet, or vice versa. And both changes are recorded in the blockchain. So uh, at the event horizon, uh, there will be another smart contract that will transform the smart ticket into the barcode representation on the user's verified devices. So this barcode then can be used to, uh, with legacy access control systems to verify the ownership. So a lot of these systems talk about <coughs> building open protocol, right? And th that is a good idea actually, because in this case we can have a shared pool that could be used, tr be transparently used by different applications that could sell tickets. And uh, yeah, that is a wise decision to use blockchain in this case, and it makes more sense to use blockchain when we have a business network rather than a single organization. So unfortunately, there are many versions of this protocol at the moment. So the future will tell us if we have this idea implemented or not. But for now, many companies building their own protocol, calling them open protocol. So uh, <coughs> as far as I know, there is also an idea to build a blockchain, a TGD and blockchain consortium that could standardize such protocol. So, uh, now let's summarize and talk about some pros and cons for this approach, right? So, as a benefits, we can say that we have a full control over the ticket flow, as all the operations are controlled by smart contracts of the system. There will be no fraudulent transaction and chargebacks. Well, I need to clarify that chargeback may still appear when we buy Ethereum via our credit card, that still could be the case. But if you talk about payments within the system where everything goes through the digital currencies, then there is no money in the middle. You basically send money to the recipient and that's it. So no one can initiate a charge back. So the tickets are unforgeable because, uh, well, there is a digital asset that you can forge. And we have a scalper's prevention because uh, all the resale process, again, is controlled by the smart contracts. And as I already mentioned, we can build an open ticket pool so that there is a bigger chance of sold out events. So, yeah, so good so far, but obviously there are some cons as well. And first, the technology is not yet mature. So there is still an open question about scalability and consensus product, consensus algorithm. Also, some systems are planning to use IPFS, which stands for Interplanary File System for the distributed data storage, and that product is still in the alpha, so we don't know how it will behave in the real life. There is quite a long transaction time, so if you know in Bitcoin it takes about two minutes to finalize the transaction, and in Ethereum it, it is about 20 seconds at the moment, and it also depends on the network load and the fee you have attached to the transaction. So. <coughs> and the crypto market is quite volatile, so the token price may vary. It is also quite long time to market, because, uh, well, typically it could take about more, even more than a year to deploy the system from the scratch. And it is quite costly, as it requires quite a lot of blockchain developers, and there are not so many of them on the market this time, 
it could also change as more can become available. Okay, so um, I think we have a room for a question at this point, right? Mm -hmm. I believe. Anyone? Oh, wait, so. So, do I need to rewrite the open service? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, um, well, the, the simplest answer is not really. So, uh, let's talk about the next use case, which is actually tickets migration to the blockchain. In this case, we will not rewrite the whole system, <coughs> but uh, this is a good option if you want to cope with the main ticketing pains like scalping prevention, regulated secondary market, and uh, knowing who your real customer is. So in this case, you, would, you may want to import the tickets that are sold through the existing ticketing system, so leaving all the infrastructure in, uh, in place, but importing tickets into blockchain ecosystem so that they become a digital asset rather than a piece of paper. Right? So, and, and then on the mobile wallet, you can see them and transfer them using the smart contract that could regulate that. So, at Sojourn, we have developed a proof of concept for this to just to verify that this idea is achievable in the reasonable amount of time and even with a small team. So, basically, we have built an API that can import tickets into the blockchain and have built some smart contracts that could regulate how a ticket could be transferred, to whom they could be transferred, and how the barcode will appear. So basically we can say that barcode should appear only at the gates area and uh, just before the event start time. So we also developed a mobile application that a dedicated user can see the tickets, they can transfer them, and as I mentioned, they can see the barcode later on. So, as far as I know, Secutix also uh, worked on the project, and they presented uh, that last year, uh, the project to restrict the comp ticket sale to some uh, defined customers only. And as far as I know, the results were quite successful, so they're planning next phases. <coughs> okay, so I think we might have a second question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What if I don't catch my main revenue growth, we still build blockchain solutions? Well, thank you very much for being so active. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, that's a good question. And uh, let's talk about the third option that I'm trying to talk. And basically that is uh, building add-on services using blockchain. So in this case, you may want to utilize the blockchain benefits, but don't, you don't basically want to touch your main revenue flow. So leave it separately, build something on top of it, something separate. And uh, we also all played with that, so we built the proof of concept and call it like loyalty and reward application. So uh, the idea is that you can uh, replenish your customers with some uh, coins that they can uh, redeem later on for a discount, uh, to, to, to have some discount on your next purchase. And that also allows uh, some uh, partners to join the network and offer discount for their products and services as well. And as we know, the blockchain whole has a sense when we have a business network. So let's say if you are a venue owner, you may partner with nearby restaurant to offer a discount to your ticket buyers. And at the same time, you both want to be sure that all transactions are valid and you can trust them. So, just as conclusion, I want to, some, to say that blockchain has definitely intrigued the business community and opened doors for the new ideas. And whether companies will succeed in deploying blockchain solutions uh, to build products and services that customers will trust and adopt remains to be seen. The demand for the blockchain setups are on the rise and Technology is maturing and advancing at rapid pace. So with more money being poured on the blockchain startups, consumers may not be surprised to see many of the distributed services become mainstream in the nearest future. 
And well, if you have an idea how you would like to use blockchain in your ticketing uh, service or with your entertainment partner, we will be happy to help you, to work with you, to flesh out your use case and uh, decide if blockchain is a good solution for you or not. So that's, that's all I have for now. So thank you. Thank you to Lubomir Nikoforuk uh, for the informative presentation on blockchain. <laughs> Um, I would encourage you, if you have questions, to definitely uh, search them out over the next, uh, the rest of the day and tomorrow. Um, also, if you, uh, Andrew wanted me to remind you that stop by Stand 18 because they're having an all-day ongoing blockchain conversation. So you can fulfill all of your uh, questions and knowledge needs about the blockchain very easily here. Uh, so thank you again. The next uh, panel is going to be starting about five minutes. It is called uh, One Plus One is Three. And it is about uh, turning data into 